Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Yes, by the current garbage, it's cold outside, there's wind, there's rain, low pressure's piling in off the Atlantic. There's only one thing to do, is get in the Totally Awesome Workshop and make some stuff. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make some bobbins, show you a real cheap, easy way, cheap, see, free, of making bobbins for bite indication, mostly in still waters. I mean, we used them 50 years ago. This is all we did. We made them out of plain old washing up liquid bottle caps. That's right. Unscrew them, throw away. I'm left with a bottle cap. Now they're pretty much just about, got some more here, different ones, pretty much about the right size I find for bobbins for freshwater fishing bream, tench, carp, anything where you just want to bite indication. But the modern ones aren't as good as the old ones, guys. These old ones had a big loop in the gap of the hinge here. These don't. So what I'm going to do is close these up. I'm going to drill through. There's a different shaped one there. The hinge bit there just to open it up a little bit. And that will take the channel for my fishing line. That's a nice one. I mean, I'm a bit of a specialist bit of an expert on washing up bottle tops and of course they hang just nicely let's get this one drilled just through but in front of the hinge all you got to do you can see where the hinge is you don't want to cut that you snap it shut you just place it somewhere rigid like a vice there get it quite tight but don't snap it to the hinges back here give myself a very small drill it's only got to take the diameter of the uh, line and I'm just going to drill through there, start it off slowly, get it accurate first. That's the first section. Second section. Now I can drop that out and put a slightly bigger drill in depending on what type of diameter of line I'm using. with a sandpaper just to get the surplus off snaps shut like that and of course let me show you so here's a piece of fishing line right up here sloping down towards the water like any bobbin you put it on you put your line in that slot there it doesn't damage the line look watch guys why did that spool fall on the floor doesn't damage the line look slides up and down so easy unbelievable you're sitting like this watching the rod and beep 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 up it goes but it slides so you can play the fish with it on 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 leaving it on there if you want or as you're fighting the fish just pop it off the other couple of tips you can do totally awesome tips here if it's very windy okay it's like this and it's blowing and you're getting beep 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 on your bite indicator all you got to do is this with a piece of coat hanger wire Get yourself a piece of coat hanger, maybe, I suppose about, about a foot long. You're not allowed to push it in the ground. Piece of coat hanger wire, pair of cutters, as easy as that. If you want, you can even paint these white so that you can see them in your light, you know, so you don't fall over them. Spike it in the ground, put your bobbin just through here, like that. And you can see if this was in the ground, Got this went the wrong way, I'm not going to be able to do this and show you. But you can see the principle of it. If that was there, imagine that's the rod here. It's not blowing around in the wind, but the fish can stick. It's like a monkey climb, what we used to call a monkey climb. The reel's back here, the rod tops that way. Here comes the bite. Beep, 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 beep. Over the top, it's off of this rigid coat hanger wire. And obviously, you have to remember that whatever hole you drill, it should be really the size of a piece of coat hanger wire. That way you can slot it through, spike it as well, but you can make them even lighter. So you want to make it even lighter than that, simple, junior hacksaw on the table on a piece of wood, saw both edges off either side of the hinge. So there's the hinge there, you're going to saw that piece off, that piece off, it makes it a fraction of the weight for still dodgy conditions where you've got something like a roach or a bream just tweaking away at it. Cut it out lighter and you'll get a full take and be able to strike and hopefully catch a fish.
there you go it's cut those two edges off it's made it even lighter so you can actually have by retaining the hole there you can have two light two medium standards and two heavy oh how do you make the heavy one though well it's simple really because if you look there's a gap that was in the back there where the thread is you could put some plasticine which I think in modern terms is called Play-Doh, or you could use a piece of mud or clay. This is a piece of clay. Don't tell me there's nothing like that. A piece of mud around the fishery. Just watch this. Push it in, smear it off with your thumb. That one has now made a nice heavy bobbin. So there you go, the option to make some different weighted bobbins. Great fun to make, cost you nothing. And of course, these ones you can make heavy, and with a piece of co-hanger wire, you've got your monkey climb for windy conditions. Every eventuality, or except night. Ah, oh, what you do at night, what we used to do, on the top edge here, we just glue a tiny piece of valve rubber into the valve rubber. We would crack one of those night lights, silume sticks, two chemicals you mix together, snap, pop it in there, and you've got your light. You've got everything the modern fancy ones do, and adjustable as well. I love it. It's another totally awesome fishing tip. Well, here we go. That's the bait organised for the next session. Now, is it me or does everybody have difficulty in their fancy tackle boxes or their fancy multi-pocketed tackle carrying bags? Do they have trouble finding stuff? You know, when you're sat in a swim and you're looking for this, I'm not talking about carp because carp, a lot of times you throw it out and that's it, you just sit there. But when you're working, you're going bream, roach, float, ledger, swim feeder, all the different types of fishing, changing tackle and techniques, it's just sometimes it's a nightmare. I can't find the disgorger. And I sat down a couple of years ago and I thought, what do I actually need? Half of this junk I don't even need. I take it like we all do. You take it to the river, you take it to the lake. Half the time you bring it all the way back. You don't, you don't use it. You take it just in case. The just in case for me never seems to arise. I've been using the last couple of years a plastic box. Let me show you. Not as stupid as it sounds, maybe someone would market one, but it's dead handy when you're sitting in a swim, you're just sitting there and you want your basics to hand. This is what it is. So here we are, you're sat by the lake. No, 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 it's in my garage because it is horrible out there today. Two big low pressures coming in. You're sat, imagine this, in your swim, by a river, you're not gonna move for the day, or a lake, wherever, canal could be anywhere. Why not just use, underneath my seat, I have a plastic box. Now, of course, I've got my tackle bag, because you, us anglers and fishermen have to take as much clobber and rubbish as you can get sold. It's just the way it is. You have to take it just in case. But you know what? I have this right next to me, like this. So I'm fishing away, and I've got pretty much everything for that particular session, particular technique, in here. So simple. Let me show you. Bit like me really simple but I will show you so there it is guys the luxury little storage unit it might look pretty basic in there and it is right here are the things I need right to my hand eyed hooks if I'm using eyed hooks oh where's my hook link it's here I can tie up traces I may be using one particular type like the chum afloat I got that in there because it doesn't have to go in there this was my last you know my last trip my last session swim feeders you want two or three if you break off you haven't got to go hunting through your big bag for them they're right by you where you want them by hand a lock knife for cutting bait lunch and meat a pair of folding glasses for those of us who have poor eyesight i see how many ganglers let me ganglers how many anglers out there are oh, like me you need glasses and you look around or you're wearing your reading glasses and you just you know or driving glasses and you haven't got the other pair with you another feeder a few bobbins piece of piece of yucky stuff there you go there's my bobbins that i make you can see i always chuck two or three of those in there then you ask yourself what's over this side over this side i'll cut a piece of plywood there in the back there i can tuck just my bits of PVA and maybe, oh my God, oh my God, a carp rig. My God, that's a rarity. PVA bags, they're just there because it keeps them nice and dry on the edge. But, <clears throat> folks, this piece of wood can go across there. And then I can put 
any baits I want to hand there, my bait tin, anything I want that I'm using immediately, maybe a swim feeder or easy to hand, that's what that wood is there is, is for. Another little tip before my throat goes, in here I've glued just a piece of square conduit. Why? Because who always needs a disgorger, forceps, a pair of scissors, they're all stuck in there vertically, easy to grab, easy to get out, brilliant. Everything's where I want it, you can see how small it is, my shot are all in this. Oh my god, what is Graham done there? I cut in half a milk bottle container into which I keep all my shot in one spot. They don't roll around in the back here, get all tangled up. A little bit of white sealant, silicon sealant to hold it, and my most used box ever. Just a little one in there. Swivels, links, bits and bobs, nuts and bolts. So you can see that the bottom of a milk bottle container is absolutely ideal for this type of thing. All the different shots are in there. Treble A, Swan Shot, BBs, number eight, a drum of rubbish ones. I just put my board in there, which you could be you know, bait preparation table if you like. This right next to me, I'll leave it like that. Leave it this end and I keep my self clear there. Just slot into that. Any rigs I might be using hooks to nylon, they're all kept nice and flat. And the rest, pretty well. Just drop it all back in there. There you go. That's my, my basics from my last fishing trip. Bobbins, whatever you want to put in there. Happen to be used a chunk. I must obviously a whack load of different hook sizes. That's pretty much it. In goes my scissors. Now when I put it in my tackle box, obviously I put it in like this. When I get out ready for session, in it goes. One, two, they drop in there. I know exactly where they are to hand. I think you might agree that is a pretty cool little box of all my bare necessities. Totally awesome fishing. Tip it costs you a pound. I don't know. Maybe 50p for the box. A piece of scrap. Well, you can make up yourself. Of course, you can make boards to fit the whole top if you want. You can use bigger boxes. But that, for me, carries pretty much everything I'm doing for the day. Swim feedering, quiver tipping, float fishing, whatever that technique is I'm using. It's in this box. It's either under my chair or right by my side. I think it's a good tip. I think it should be patented and I should get royalties or something for it. Right guys, here's another tip. Is it me or is there another single angler out there that absolutely hates this stupid monstrous landing net rule? 48 inch arms. A 48 inch, look. I could fit five people in it for God's sake. I could wear it as a dress at a ball. What is the point of monumentally big four foot arm landing nets? It's beyond me. Listen guys, just as, it's 48 inches. So you're gonna fold a fish in there. Right, that, that's, that's from there to there. That's that big. That's an 80 pound carp. But some of these carp walkers got fish 30, 40 pounds. And let's face it, most of the measurement goes that way, not this way. So why do we have to have these big nets? I don't know, but hey ho, rules are rules. However, I tell you what I do hate because I like going mobile. If you're going float to fishing, you wind your other lines in and you clear off around the lake. These are such fun, aren't they? They're such fun, especially in the summer. And you get them into the brambles and you can't rip them out because it's got this huge, great big dress that's around it. And then, just as you get it out of the brambles, you step back, put it down, Oh, there's a fish rise in there. Let's get the net ready. Oh, great. It's gone into, yes, a barbed wire fence. Isn't it fun, ladies? Anyway, what I've done is this with these horrible great big nets that I see no reason for. What I do is I've made a little release mechanism so that you can walk around with them folded up like this. Far less chance of getting them snagged up. A ring taped or tied on there. A ring taped or tied on there. Piece of cord, piece of string, whatever you want. Wait for this technical, guys. A clothes peg, but with rubber bands around it to make it really tight. All you do is this. What I do is I just put a couple of folds into that baggy, horrible dress bit that hangs down about. Why does it hang down so? I'll tell you what, the length of the arms aren't so bad. Why does it have to hang down so far? What is the point of it hanging down four feet or something like that? I don't, I've never been able to see the, the, the logic in that myself. So what I do is I put my peg like this, it's clipped in there, that holds it all nice and tight. And then, wait for this, 
I get a fish, I'm, I'm going around, I pick my net up. All I do is pull, pull on here, it releases the peg, click, the whole lot falls down. How easy was that, folks? So there it is. Two rings on your landing net pole. Listen, guys, you make it up yourself you know, as you go along. You don't have to use a clothes peg. Find another peg that can do it. That's all you do. Clip it up like that. Fold your net in there. I mean, you can get... I've got some outrigger clips from fishing. They're really good. But you, you just want to be something that look, the clips hold it up like that. And then watch if I can do it. You just pull the peg. Way back here, obviously. Bang. The whole net falls free. Totally awesome fishing tips there for you. Take them or leave them or use them. We'll see you next time. Don't forget to watch the Totally Awesome Outdoor Show. <coughs> I'm off to get some cough mixture. And don't forget to watch out for the bi-monthly magazine of the Awesome Angler. It is like our films. It's a free download and all our films are free to watch. Look out for some more Totally Awesome Fishing Tips. I think I might get this made into a wedding dress. Hmm.